You might need to sharpen the wood burner tip. I use a drill and a file. Obviously, you plug in the wood burner after sharpening. I like to practice writing what I'll engrave and make sure it fits on the thing I'll be engraving. I'll be engraving both sides of this Swiss Army knife. This one's called a Rambler. They have great names for these things. I use that little velvet desk that I made because the plastic on these knives scratches very easily. Try to use a pencil with a tip about as thick as the wood burner tip. And we'll do the date side first. Five times optivisor. I use an old knife to check the heat and thickness of the wood burner tip. This one's a little too thick, but I'll manage. This takes practice and I have bad handwriting. No coffee beforehand, and the key is to commit and go at the speed that melts the plastic to the right thickness and depth. I've done this probably a hundred times, and I still screwed up the seven, and I'm not crazy about the eight either. I keep the little post-it there because I get disoriented when I'm engraving and I can't really stop to think what letter I'm supposed to be writing next so I can just glance at the side and not think, just write. Pretty good. The package says 18 karat gold and I believe it. With vice grips, you carefully pull the tip from the barrel not the other way around. And that lighter fluid is to clean the nib tip, but we'll worry about that later. There's a little ball bearing in there that we want to dump with the paint. There it goes. This is called a nib pen, and I use the nib that's about this big. Just the tip. This part is important. You gotta blot the paint so it doesn't drip. These ones are good. This one's too much and will ruin your gilding. This paint is almost impossible to remove from the plastic. The idea with the gilding is that you want to pool the paint, then drag it into the channel without the paint breaching the walls of the numbers or the letters. You can go slowly, but you don't want the paint to dry on the nib. If it does, you use the lighter fluid to wash it. You can use an extra fine tip paint pen to get a feel for the gilding if you're not ready to commit to gold. Um, use Sharpie brand or deco color, but it must be a paint pen and it must be the extra fine tip. Uh, I've only been able to find the 18 karat gold paint in the fat tip Krylon pen. So that's what for the nib and jar and all that. Pretty good. Not crazy about the eight and seven, but from far away, it will look pretty factory. It takes 15 minutes minimum to dry, and just to be safe, I cover the gilded side with a post-it so it doesn't mess up when I do the other side. I do a much better job with the letters. If you're really brave and feeling confident, you can gild the edge ridge of the letters, but I don't do it here because I'm out of practice and it's a, it's a teeny tiny knife. I don't really have precise artist coordination. I don't have that artist touch or precision with my hands naturally. Uh, one of the reasons I do so many handmade activities is because when I was a little kid, my handwriting was so bad that my teachers suggested to my parents that uh, they buy me scale model cars to, to build, to work on my dexterity and hand-eye coordination. That was probably 40 years ago. Thank you. That little wooden block keeps my hand at the right height in relation to the letters. In this shot, I'm just trying to show you the pooling and dragging technique.
I put a lanyard on them because it makes it easier to fish them out of your pocket and easier to find when you lose it. And you will lose it. And this one's for a three-year-old, so I took the edge off the blade. They come razor sharp out of the box. I have something for you. What? Okay, come around here. This is from your Uncle Scott. It's a wasabi knife. What's in it? Can you open it? Yeah. I'm going to show you how. I'll do it. Can you show me how? Nice. This week on Patreon, my first ever live stream answering your comments. Uh, the link is right there.